Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us at the market site in Times Square, New York City, Fausto Puglisi is back with us. He's the founder and CEO of Cyber Trading University, and we're going to show traders how to use NASDAQ Total View for day and swing trading. Fausto, great to have you back with us as always. One of our favorite segments where you run through an amazing uh, display of how to use NASDAQ Total View. And we're going to go to our first slide here. Uh, you know, an overview of exactly what it is. Well, thanks, Jill, for having me again. And yes, uh, basically, just kind of really kind of reiterate, we've done so many times this, but I just want to explain a little bit more what total view is. A lot of people still stuck on level two and don't realize that that total view gives you over 20 times more data. Uh, what happens, a lot of people get a little confused when they're looking at all these orders and everything else. But I'm going to go over in detail, you know, in the next couple of slides. But you have to understand that what controls the market is buyers and sellers. And with total view, you, you get to see the open book and you get to see all the buyers and sellers where they're at. All right, let's go to our next slide here. And our theme for this month, of course, in January are the retail stocks because we just came off of the all important holiday season. Let's take a look at Kohl's. Okay, so obviously we spoke last time that retailers might be pretty big. Christmas was, was a great year. A lot of people did a lot of shopping, but let's see how the stocks are doing. So talking about Kohl's, I got two basic charts I want to show. So basically we got an intraday chart and we got a daily chart. So being a good day trader makes you a great swing trader, but you got to understand what happens over the course of the day. And basically the whole idea is this. If you notice on the chart, on the intraday and the long-term chart, you got a very big buyers right around $45 a share going into July, August, you know, even to the new year. And people look at it, well, what makes that big support level, not only for a swing trader, but also very clearly here on the day trade. So if we go to the next slide, how do things go up and go down? Supply and demand. And then when you look over here, buyers equal support. You have 128,000 share seller just sitting right there. And when you look at this, when you look at total view, you got 200 shares, you got 300, that 128,000, what does that really tell you? That's a big buyer out there. And that is somebody, and what makes that is a support level. All right, let's move on to Macy's here. And this is uh, an interesting one to talk about because the question is how much lower can it continue to go? Actually, we're still on Kohl's, all right. Uh, there we go. There's Macy's. Okay. But that's the big question. How much lower can Macy's go? Um, if you look at it from a fundamental perspective, you could have a daily chart, a weekly chart to get your different time frames. But at the end of the day, it's going to come back to where the supply is sitting. Exactly, because there's always going to be buyers and sellers everywhere. So when you look at Macy's right here, you could see it's trending down. So the first thing people always ask, they panic, where, are, you know, where the buyers are. And the problem with charts, Jill, is that people don't realize that the chart doesn't talk back to you. It's the past. It's not the future. Mm -hmm. So you need to know where the buyers are in the future. So looking at this, you're sitting there, you're twiddling your thumbs, like, where do I jump in? Do I sell now? Well, the only thing you have to do, you have to check out on total view. All right, and we can see that on our next slide here, exactly where that supply is. Now, this is a great, a great shot that I got. I mean, look at this. 322,000 shares at 1758. You're not even looking at a chart. Right there, you'll notice buyers everywhere. The biggest buyer right now is looking to buy 3,800 shares at 1785. So the thing is, okay, is 1785 a support? Is 1777 a support? There's only 900. You got 300,000 shares. Be patient because that's where the buyers are going to step in. That is what we call program trading. All right, now our next slide here, we can look at it side by side and see exactly where. Right, so here's your buyer, mm -hmm. and look what happened when I look at the intraday chart. So here we're day trading, and you could see it right here in the morning. This stock just literally just tanked, but it stopped here for not only for 30 minutes. It hit it, it bounced, it hit it, it bounced, and boom, look at that. It went straight back up. So you know, people look at it like, why did it bounce? Well, listen, if you looked at the total view and you noticed there was a big buyer out there, you know, one thing leads to another. All right, now let's move along to our next uh, chart. It's Tilray over here. Different sector, but the same premise applies. When do you look to sell after you've established your bottom? Right, so now this is a little bit more of a unique looking chart. So here we're looking at a stock, TLRY, you know, very popular stock. This stock actually was a $300 stock about last year. It was a very, very mm -hmm. fun stock, pop stock. But anyway, it's been on a big move the last uh, two days. Yesterday we were trading it, and the whole idea is this. The stock is trending up, nice little trend, 17 to 1960. So if you look over here, uh, what is your game plan? You got to look for sellers because, listen, it's a nice profit from 1760 to 1960. But the question is, how much higher could it go? You want to have that game plan. So we change the slide here. You'll notice that there is a 28,000 share. Not as, you know, 
as large as the other ones with 100, 300, you do have something there. And remember, sellers make resistance levels. So that would be our resistance levels. And by the way, I forgot to mention, not only is there sellers, but this is another very important tool on Total View. You got 14 different orders. So people think about like, well, how many people are actually out there? Mm -hmm. That's why the orders are very important because you get to get an idea of how many, uh, how many of them out there that make up that 28,000. All right, now let's move along to our last slide here on Tilray. We can see again the sell orders and exactly how the chart. Right, so up. here's the same stock, it's the same stock for the day. Now you can see the stock trending up. It hits the resistance level, which was that seller right here of 28,000. And if you didn't have a game plan there, Jill, the stock would have came down and you would have literally lost over 50 cents on that trade. Now, 50 cents on 1,000 shares, you know, some traders look at it's $500, $100,000 right there. But the goal is having that game plan. All right, let's go along to our next slide here because you brought up orders before and you hear this all the time. It's fake orders, they're spoofing, and the, you know, these are just moving the bid and the ask around. How do you answer that question? Okay, so now the question is, well, if you look at TLRY, well, is it really going down? I mean, listen, sellers, it, it, total view, you can use it two different ways. Not only you see sellers out there, but remember, a seller makes resistance. But when you see a resistance levels, someone could buy that 28,000, right? Someone said, you know what? I need, I need that stock. Oh my God, I don't need 100, I need, I need, I need 28,000. So first of all, there's no such thing as fake orders. They're all real. But the thing is, how do we know that order got executed? And there's something called check the tape, which is called the time and sales window, which a lot of traders neglect and don't realize it because that's where a lot of the, uh, of the data from a chart gets its, its data from. All right, and our last chart here, we can actually take a look at that and see where the execution occurred. Right, so here's the stock that we looked earlier. This is, this is TLRY. We saw it hit that 28,000 share seller, and it backed off. And then you can see as 230 came around, that seller got executed, and the stock ran from $20 to 2250 within the next, you know, by the end of the day, even going to half hours. How do we know that order gets executed? It's the time and sales. And you could see right there, all green orders. 980, 980, 980, 980. Look at all those transactions and time and sales. And that's how you know when you see an order, knowing that if there's an order out there, it causes resistance. But if that order gets filled, obviously that's how they break out. All right. Great stuff as always. We'll see you back here in February. Thanks for joining us at Market Site. And thanks for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malentrino, Global Markets Reporter at